Hi again. Next I'd like to discuss an example of sequencing jobs in a job shop. Say for example you've got a workstation and jobs are arriving at your workstation. And uh, I'd like to discuss the, the four different rules. Uh, first come, first serve, shortest processing time, earliest due date, and lowest slack. So first comes first serve is like the default rule. Let's assume that job A, B, C, and D come to your workstation in that order. First come, first serve. Processing time for job A is 20, 10 for job B, 30 for job C, 15 for job D. And the due dates are 20, 15, 50, and 30 respectively. So with first come, first serve, job A arrives first and is thus completed in time 20. Job B is completed in time 30. 20 plus 10 is 30. Job C is completed at time 60. 30 plus 30 is 60. And job D is completed at time 75. 60 plus 15 is 75. If we sum that column and take the average, the average completion time is 46.25. Now if we look at the due dates, the due date for A was 20, the completion time was 20, so it was not tardy, tardiness of zero. Job B, it was completed at time 30, it was due on, at time 15, so the tardiness was 15. The job C was completed at time 60, it was due at time 50, so the tardiness was 10. And lastly, Job D was completed at time 75, it was due at time 30, so it was 45 units tardy. So if we take the summation of this column, tardiness, to get 70, and again take the average tardiness, we get 17.5. Now we'll use these two measures, average completion time and average tardiness, to evaluate which of the rule, rules is the best in this example. The next rule is SPT shortest processing time. So the order is B, D, A, and C because the processing times are 10, 15, 20, and 30 from small to large. So the completion times are 10, 25, 45, 75. The average completion time is 38.75. Uh, notice that the job was completed, job B was completed at time 10. It was due at time 15, so it's not tardy. So zero tardiness for B and D respectively. A and C both have 25 units of tardiness, resulting in an average completion time of 38.75 and an average uh, tardiness time of 12.5. Notice that this is better than first come, first serve, which is typical for shortest processing time. The next rule is earliest due date. So we order them, we complete job B first, then A, then D, and then C, based on the order of these due dates, 15, 20, 30, and 50, from small to large. Again, we calculate our completion times and our tardiness in a similar manner. Notice that the average completion time is 40 and the average tardiness is 12.5. Uh, so, so far, shortest processing time is best. It has a lower average completion time. Uh, average tardiness is the same as in this rule here, earliest due date. Next, we'll calculate the law of slack in sequence based on that order from small to large. Slack is defined as the due date minus today's date minus the remaining processing time. Let's assume that today's date is zero. So job A has a slack of 20 which is the due date, minus 0, minus 20, is equal to 0. B has 15 minus 0, minus 10. C has 50 minus 0, minus 30. And D has 30 minus 0, minus 15 is equal to 15. So the sequence of the order is A is completed first, B is next, uh, D is next, and C follows.
Okay, so A, B, D, C in that order. Notice then that the average completion time is 42.5 and the average tardiness is 13.75. So once again, we see that the best rule, when you compare the average completion time and the average tardiness, the one that has the lowest is the SPT rule, which had average completion time of 38.75 and 12.5. Of course, some jobs might have higher priority. Some customers might have higher priority, and um, we would then reorder. But as a default, we probably want to use one of these rules.